You know, guys, Tech to Gym and Family Adventures, we are back out, but a different video today. We are on an adventure. We're at Quirk Castle. A bit of history about the castle. Uh, the castle was built in 1295, and it was where Edward the First uh, stayed. Uh, over the video, you're not going to hear my voice. Uh, you're going to be a voiceover telling you a bit of history more history about the castle and all that lot. So I hope you enjoy and let's see what we can see. The castle was built in 1295 by Roger Mortimer de Chirk, uncle of Roger Mortimer, first Earl of March as part of King Edward the first chain of fortresses across the north of Wales. It guards the entrance to the Kerriog Valley. It was the administrative centre for the Marcher Lordship of Chirkland. The castle was bought by Sir Thomas Middleton in 1593 for £5,000, approximately £11 million as of 2008. His son, Thomas Middleton of Chirk Castle was a parliamentarian during the English Civil War, but became a royalist during the Cheshire Rising of 1659 led by George Booth, 1st Baron de la Mare. Mullioned and transomed windows were inserted in the 16th and 17th centuries. The castle was partly demolished in the English Civil War and then rebuilt. Following the restoration, his son became Sir Thomas Middleton, 1st Baronet of Chirk. The castle passed down in the Middleton family to Charlotte Middleton, on the death of her father in 1796. Charlotte had married Robert Bidulph, who changed his name to Robert Middleton Bidulph, leaving the castle on his death to their son Robert. It then passed down in the Middleton Bidulph family. From before World War I until after World War II, the castle was leased by Thomas Scott Ellis, 8th Baron Howard de Walden, a prominent patron of the arts and champion of Welsh culture. In 1918, Chirk Castle was used as film location for Victory and Peace, directed by Herbert Brennan. The Baron opened up parts of the castle to evacuees during the later part of the Second World War. The Middleton family returned to live at Chirk Castle until 2004. Lieutenant Colonel Rurid Middleton was an extra equerry to Queen Elizabeth II from 1952 until his death in 1988. Chirk remained in the Middleton family until it was transferred to the National Trust in 1981. The castle and gardens are open to the public between March and October, with limited opening dates in November and December. section this is where the guards would have been uh, <coughs> excuse me uh, an old wooden bed these are the other files 
crazy. Hello? So you get the ceiling a bit modern. No <laughs> roof hairs. Yeah. Little guard room, yeah. So there you go, a bit more information.
Yeah, we've got to get into the main building, can we? To the 4th of March. To the 4th of March. So we'll come back down and do a video of the inside of the Quirk Castle. We've seen some of the rooms here. Uh, the grounds are massive. Oh, I'm walking. Hmm. Yeah. I said, just we're going to be like little clips. We've come in. Of what we see and stuff like that. More yeah. adventures to come, guys. It's National Trust. So, yeah. Really nice day, isn't it? Mm. Uh, part of the castle you can get into. Pretty cool. Like the dungeons and stuff like that. The property is notable for its gardens, with clipped yew hedges, herbaceous borders, rock gardens and terraces and surrounded by 18th century parkland. This parkland was originally laid out as a deer park in the 14th century. From the early 17th century there were both formal and kitchen gardens adjacent to the castle, probably on the eastern side. The gardens continued to develop after the Civil War, including the construction of an outer courtyard to the north, surrounded by stone walls with a wrought iron gateway. By 1719 the courtyard had been turfed over and the gates replaced by a magnificent set of wrought iron gates and gate screen made by Robert and John Davies of Bersham. A panoramic view of the park by Thomas Baddeslade, published in 1742, shows the resulting grand baroque layout of formal gardens and avenues. This included formal gardens to the east of the castle, with a walled outer courtyard and kitchen gardens to the north. Most of this layout was swept away by extensive landscaping in the 1760s and 70s, undertaken by William Eames, on behalf of Richard Middleton, including the construction of a ha-ha and the removal of the Davies gates to be re-erected at the new hall entrance. These works were largely responsible for the present-day appearance of the park. A prominent feature of the park is the earthwork of Offa's Dyke, which passes within 200 meters of the castle. This is shown on the Baddesley drawing, labelled as King Offa's Ditch, with the ornamental lake beyond. The earthwork was partly submerged by the creation of the lake. In 2018 and 2018 the Cluid Poes Archaeological Trust excavated a section across Offa's Dyke here, and found substantial remains of the ditch and bank. The parkland landscape had partly been responsible for preserving the remains of the dyke. The oak at the Gate of the Dead lies 300 meters from Chirk Castle and marks the site of the 1165 Battle of Krogan. The parks and gardens are listed as Grade 1 in the SADU, ICOMOS Register of Parks and Gardens of Special Historic Interest in Wales.